Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is the day that the Lord has made. Yes. And hallelujah. we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 We give him the sacrifice of praise this morning. It doesn't matter what we've been through the whole week. It doesn't matter what we felt like when we got up this morning. We came here with the ultimate goal to give the great and mighty God all the praise, glory, and honor because he deserves it. Hallelujah. Y'all lift us up with us this morning.
on, how many know there's none like our God this morning? If you believe there's none like him, come on, lift your name this morning. Hallelujah.
Come on and give him your best praise. Come on, give him your best praise. Come on and give him your best praise. We lift your name, yeah.
Oh, it's free indeed. Oh, it's free indeed. I'm a child I'm of God. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, God, it's me. Oh, come on, ponder on that this morning. You're a child of God. You're a child of the Most High King. You're a child of the Most High King. You can wear that badge of honor. Hallelujah. God, you chose me. You chose me, Jesus. When that no one else chose me, God, you chose me. Jesus, I can stand and say I'm a child of the God. I'm a child of the Most High King. I am chosen, not forsaken. Oh, I am who you say I am, Jesus. You are for me, never against me, Jesus. I am who you say I am. Let me say I'm chosen. child of God. Come on. Oh, that's the best thing you can say all day. Come on. I'm a child of God. Come on. Come on. Know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Lift your hands and say, I'm a child of God. You can call me what you want to call me. You can call me what you think you want to call me. Hallelujah. But I know the revelation. I'm a child of God. And we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. Somebody say, I'm a child of God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Come on, look at two people around you and say, you ain't know. Come on, tell them you, you ain't know. Come on, I'm a child of God. You ain't know. If you didn't know, now you know I'm a child. That's why no devil can run me off. I'm a child of God. I got a place in God. I got a place in the kingdom. I got a place. I'm accepted into the beloved. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands again and just receive that freedom. I'm a child of God. Come on and elevate your thoughts. I'm a child of God. Woo, come on, y'all feel that freedom? Glory to God. I'm a child of God. I know who my natural mother and father is. Glory to God. But even greater than that, I'm a child. Before I was in my mother's womb, he know, knew me. I'm a child of God. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. I'm a child of God. Yes, I am. In my Father's house. Come on, say, there's a place for me. Come on. How much I put an attitude on it. Yes, I am in my father's. Come on, we moving. There's a place for me. I'm a child. I'm a what you say? Yes, I am. Come on, I'm chosen. I am chosen. Not forsaken, I am who you say I am. Come on, you are for me. You are not against me. I am. Come on, are you on the Lord's side? I'm chosen. Not forsaken, I am. <laughs> Come on, you are for me. Not against me. I break condemnation this morning. One more time. You are for me, not against me. I am. I am who you say I am. I am chosen. Last time, whom the sun, whom the sun sets. I'm not an orphan, oh, it's free. I'm not a bastard, come on. I'm a child of attitude. Yes, I am. <laughs> Somebody make some noise and you know you are. Woo! Come on, make some noise if you know that's right. What you say? Yes, I am. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Somebody make some noise. Glory to God. Child of God. What you say? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> See, the devil don't like that type of worship. I said he don't like that type of worship. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm a child of, what you say? Yes, I am. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, wave those hands. We're moving to the next portion of our service, but we come to make a statement. We come to make a declaration before we go any further. We come to remind, glory to God. Sometimes you need to be reminded, glory to God. Sometimes you need to release it in the atmosphere. I'm a child Yes, I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not a. What you say? Hi. Woo, hallelujah. Come on, clap those hands. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Freedom is the children's bread. Hallelujah! I'm no longer a slave to fear. Why, why, why? Because I, there it is again, a child of God. Come on, one more time. I'm no longer a slave Oh, come on and say why. Because I am of God. I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave. Oh, for I am a child of God. Come on, clap those hands. We got to move. <laughs> My, 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 my. Tell me who's on the Lord's side. Tell me who's on the Lord's side. Tell me who's still on the Lord's side. Hallelujah. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. 
For I am a child of God. Oh, for I am a child of God. <laughs> for I am a child of God. Come on, let's receive Sister Shalanda at this time. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. Slave glory, to fear. Glory, 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 oh, for glory. I am the child, child of God. God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Last time I'm no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. To fear. I am, for I am the child of God. God. Who's all glad they came to the storehouse today? Thank you, Lord Jesus. I was glad when they say, let us go to the house of the Lord. Because when you go through the week and you go through things on your job, you, you, you know, you go through things in your home or you feel rejected or something didn't go your way. I love coming to the house of the Lord and I hear a song like this that reminds me that I'm a child of God. So no matter what I've been through, that stands. And it's going to be all right because I'm a child of God. I'm royal. Hey, hey, hey. It's, the Lord is with me. I shall not fear because I'm a child. And it feels good to be a child of God. It feels wonderful to be a child of God. Uh, let me tell you, it, it, if you don't come to the house, and you go through bad weeks or bad months, it's hard for you to get out of that because sometimes, let's be honest, we forget we're a child of God. We forget. And you have to be around community. You have to be around saints, okay, that will remind you who you are and whose you are. And so I bless God today. HFC on behalf of uh, uh, pa Bishop Lamont Hilliard, and Lady Tiger, we welcome you. We welcome you online. We welcome you in the house this morning. We thank you for tuning in. Think it not be strange. Today, the Lord has a grimmer word for you today. And we just thank you for tuning in. Those online, if you're new, put a seven in the comments so we can acknowledge you. Do we have any new visitors in the house today? All right, we're all family. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So we just welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you. We thank you for tuning in. Listen to the word. Take it in your heart today because that word will take you through the week. Thank God. And, and the word has been so revelatory. Oh, we in these last few months, I'm like, so Bishop, and, Bishop got cameras in the house, you know. It's been revelatory. And we need this word in this day and time. We need to be fed. We need to be fed. Because if you're not fed, you're a lost sheep out there. You know? And the Bible says that he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Don't be one of those people that's, <laughs> that ain't got that word in you. Because you have to have the word to fight the devil. I'm sorry. You can't do that in your flesh. <laughs> so we just welcome you. Hey, take the word in your heart today. Take the word in your heart and use that word and make it work for you in Jesus' name. And so uh, we're all family. Why not you guys get up today and give somebody a hug? Give your neighbor a hug. Tell them you love them. Tell them you thank God that they came today. You make me whole. You take the pain away.
of July. Woo! We got some awesome announcements this morning. Sunday, July 17th, we're having the new membership breakfast and orientation. Woo! Yes, we're happy about our new members. Calling all new members and those who have recently connected with the HFC family, please attend. HFC H F Leadership will be reaching out to you with more details and for you to RSVP for Sunday, July 17th at 10 a.m. Please be on the lookout and we look forward to fellowship and orientation with our senior leaders. Communication will go out to all of you. Please reply. reply. Thank you. Okay. Our next announcement. We have the Lay Sister Circle. Woo! Yes. July 23rd, 10 a.m. recording in the sanctuary, okay? Be a part of the studio audience, so if you want to come, come on out. You know, they could use that push, you know, we ask questions in the audience, you know, so let's just show our um, HFC sisters that we, they um, have our support, okay? All right, and it's airing at 7 p.m. later on that day, okay? All right, this is very exciting. Candidates for baptism. Woo! Yes! Those who desire to be baptized adults and age-appropriate children, we prefer six and up, okay? Please sign up in the foyer. Water baptism service will be scheduled soon. And so this is your opportunity to get baptized, okay? So make sure, don't forget, make sure you sign up in the foyer, and we'll give you the information when the time, when we get the information, okay? All right, so Sunday, July 17th is Super Sunday 2022. Woo! Join us during our main worship service at 11 a.m. for a powerful time. We've invited a special guest speaker, Pastor Sean E. Davis woo, of Dominion City Church in Navasota. Uh, make plans to be in attendance and invite someone you know. Invite as many people as you can, okay? All right. Now, this is, ooh, this is awesome. Annual Pastor Appreciation. Woo! Everybody clap your hands for our pastor. Yes. Yes. Make sure you hear on this day, okay? <laughs> Join us for our 2022 pastor and wife anniversary. Woo! This year is special as we are celebrating a big milestone. It's the 20 years of pastoral ministry. That is awesome. That's a long time. Yes, let's give him a hand. And, he, and not just 20 years, but 20 years of excellence. And we thank you for that. We thank you for that. We thank you for that. Let's show up and show out and honor and give the, our pastors love and support. All members are asked to be present and please invite someone. We will have a guest speaker, Pastor Kermit Childs of Love Alive Family Worship Center, okay? So make sure you're ready to show up and show out for our pastors, right? All right. Now, so you think you can sing. Woo woo. All right. <laughs> We're starting a HFC choir. Yay! Woo! All right. I heard Latrice said she wanted. All right, Latrice, we're going to put you down. She just said. <laughs> All right, Latrice. Come through, girl. <laughs> We're also looking for to minister in song. For our pastor's anniversary. Woo! That should be great. And minister continually monthly. So we're going to do this monthly, okay? Come on, let's get active. Please sign up in the foyer if you have an interest. Meeting today after church for further details. So please be present in the sanctuary for that. This is kingdom work. Everything we do is kingdom work, okay? All right, so love you guys. That's it for the um, announcements. And let's have church. <laughs> Amen. Give it up for Sister Shalonda. Did she do a wonderful job? Praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Amen. You know, so as they used to say, amen, old church, govern yourselves accordingly. All right. Bless the Lord. <laughs> govern yourselves 
accordingly. Amen. We gave you a lot of information. It's a lot going on, but God is doing great things. Amen. He is doing great things. Amen. And so he is moving. Amen. So please make sure you're signing up. Amen. For choir. Amen. Candidates of baptism. Bless the Lord. Amen. The choir is going to be singing for past appreciation. Let's give God praise for that. Amen. And then once a month, amen, monthly, praise the Lord. So get on in. Let the Lord use you. Amen. Let the Lord flow through you. Amen. We'll be meeting after church. Be here next Sunday. Amen. Super Sunday. Let's give God praise. Amen. And we have called this, amen, mid-year recharge. Okay. So we have themed, amen, next Sunday service, mid-year recharge. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, some of you are already fired up because you under the word, right? Amen. But I'm telling you, it's just going to be an extra push, extra grace. Amen. So be here. Invite someone to come. Amen. It's our Sunday morning service. Amen. And so we're looking for great things. Amen. So Pastor Davis will be with us. And then the following Sunday, amen, it's Pastor Appreciation, right? Bless the Lord. Amen. And so Pastor Kermit Childs will be here. Amen. Preaching the word of the Lord. Amen. So God is doing great things, right? So you want to stay tuned and stay turned on to what God is doing in your church. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. To God be the glory. Give God another praise. Woo. Anybody feel all right? Because you a child of God. Y'all ready to go higher in worship? You know, we're a word church and we're a worshiping church. Bless the Lord. Amen. And so we're going to release the word of the Lord for you today. Amen. And uh, and uh, we're going to move on. Is that all right? First, got a special treat. Amen. From Brother Jeremy Price is going to come and bless us. Let's receive him as he come in his own way. Somebody say, sing, Jeremy. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Hey, church. Hey, church. How you doing? Good to see y'all again. Um, This song here is a personal message for me. Um, How many of you know that when you have a relationship, you conversate different? So um, without further ado, we're going to get this started. You are 
are beautiful, oh God. There is no one more beautiful. You are beautiful, God. You are the most beautiful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. Hallelujah. Come on, give God another praise for Brother Jeremy. I believe he's singing his testimony. I believe he's singing the sentiments of his heart. Glory to God. I'm overwhelmed. Glory to God. Have you ever had God bless you so good that you said, Lord, I'm overwhelmed by you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. His love, his peace, his joy, his forgiveness, everything that we need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Even when I mess up, even when you mess up. Look at somebody say, I do mess up sometimes. Come on, I, I do mess up. Come on, say, don't let this church close fool you. I, I, do, I do mess up. But, but because I'm a child of God, I come running back to him. And Tony, one of the lines in that song that gets me every time, say, God, I run into your arms. This part right here, unashamed because of mercy. I can't get nobody in here. Glory to God. So when people say you shouldn't be coming back, you shouldn't be getting back, I'm unashamed because of mercy. Anybody thank God for the mercy of God? Somebody ought to shout for his mercy. I come back unashamed. I don't need to have to come back with my head down. I can hold my head up and I'm unashamed because of mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, glory to God. I delight myself in you. I'm shame because of mercy. And I'm overwhelmed. I'm overwhelmed by. Did Jeremy sing that song? Oh God. Somebody say, Oh God. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm unashamed because of mercy. His mercies are new every morning. 
So when you see folk in church, you ain't seen in a while, you don't look like back again, unashamed, because of mercy, hands up, because of mercy, praise in my mouth, because of mercy, new song in my heart, because of mercy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. 1 Samuel 18 chapter. My, my, my. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm unashamed because of mercy. I'm, a, <laughs> I'm unashamed because of mercy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your presence we feel in this place. Thank you for glory that we feel in this place. Thank you that we'll never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you that you're already moving in our midst and you're moving on our heart. And so, Father, give us this word. Hallelujah. Give us this day our daily bread. You, 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 you a daily bread kind of God. Said in your word, man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So give us your word today. Bread of heaven, feed us until we want no more. Hallelujah. We bless this food you put on the table. Glory to God. You know what we need. And a word spoken in due season. How good it is. Father, we take rest in your word. You said I give you pastors after my own heart that will feed you with knowledge and understanding. So, Father, we thank you, Lord, for this meal you have prepared, and we will surely receive those in-house and those online. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all can be seated. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're just going to flow in this. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Amen. Let's, can we just flow in it? I'm a child of God. <laughs> I'm a child of the Most High. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the Most High. Bless the Lord. Amen. Tell your neighbor, say, you better eat good. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This is this, 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 the last time you're going to hear from your pastor on the next two Sundays. You better. All right. Somebody say, I ain't think of it like that. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I mean, it's still going to be strong word, but this is going to get a little break. Praise the Lord. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Let them that have an ear to hear, hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying unto the church. Amen. But we're going to be here to receive what God is saying. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. We'll still be on Wednesday. Amen. Praise the Lord. But, but in this way, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, uh, as I begin to seek the Lord, what he wants to, to, to minister. Oh, I'm talking about the title of this message is Watch This. Somebody say, watch this. Watch this. Okay, watch this. All right. Watch this. Um, you know, uh, we, we, have to, we, have to, we have to check ourselves. You know, how many know some things start early? Even some things can start back as far as elementary school, you know. You look at shoes the other kids are wearing and you examine who got the most friends or who could jump the further when you played a game, bless the Lord, or who could jump rope the best and all this type of stuff, amen, hallelujah. Even as you grow up, amen, even in high school, sometimes you look, amen, and see how decorated someone was. Yeah. If you, you know, if you in my day, bless the Lord, some people had high school letterman jackets, praise the Lord, and it was important, amen. Man, to make sure that 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 you know some folk had every patch uh, that you earned right on their arm, amen. And if you were really gifted, you had some on the back. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. It was the standard, amen, of the sleeve. Is that all right? It was a scale, praise the Lord, to measure achievement. And many folk wore them proudly and with a little swagger. Is that all right? And some folk didn't have one and still had swagger. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. It was a scale to use. And, and sometimes if you're not careful when you trace back, amen, going back years, it, when you trace back, it was the beginning of uh, OCD or uh, obsessive comparison disorder. Okay, 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 okay. Bless the Lord. 
And sometimes what started young and as an adolescent and you grow up, bless the Lord, now as adults, if you're not careful, it can intensify until we start comparing stuff. Comparing cars, comparing houses, comparing careers, comparing bank accounts, comparing vacations, spouses and kids. Is that all right? And we have become completely obsessed with keeping up with the Joneses. And the problem is that in the process of being, uh, bless the Lord, uh, being with this OCD, hallelujah, with it is that you're unable, bless the Lord, when you operate in that, you're unable uh, 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 to be everything that you are supposed to be in Christ. In fact, the reason that some of us can't and won't make moves that we talked about in the beginning of the year is that our right is that we're so caught up watching what everyone else does. And in the process, we plateau. So, so I want to d- deal with something today. Is that all right? And we want to be very specific about some symptoms of OCD and how we can apply this to uh, our prescription to bring healing. First Samuel uh, 18, verse 5 through 11. First Samuel 18, verse 5 through 11. And it reads, whatever mission Saul sent him on, David was so successful that Saul gave him a high rank in the army. And this pleased all the troops and Saul's officers as well. And when the men, bless the Lord, were returning home after David had killed the Philistine, the women came from all the towns of Israel to meet King Saul with singing and dancing and joyful songs and with the timbrels and lyres. As they danced, they sang, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. Saul was very angry. This refrain displeased him greatly. Uh, They have credited David with tens of thousands and thought, but me, only thousands. What more can he get but the kingdom? From that time, Saul kept a close eye on David. The next day, an evil spirit, holy from God, came forcibly on Saul. He was prophesying in his house while David was playing the lyre or the harp, as he usually did, and Saul had a spear in his hand. And he hurled it, saying to himself, I'll pin David to a wall. But David eluded him twice. Somebody say it didn't work. Why did you read that, Bishop Hillett? Because you see here OCD in full display. David had just unexpectedly defeated Goliath. The victory causes Saul to notice David and bring him to live in the palace. There's a relationship established here. One of the prizes for defeating Goliath is that David marries the king's daughter. So now he's a part of the family. David, success continues. Everything seemed like he touched turns to gold. So that when the army is returning home, scripture says the women of the city came to sing. Saul, amen, they sang a song, bless the Lord. David killed 10,000 and Saul killed his thousand. And Saul began to develop a deadly case of OCD. Saul can't get his eyes off David's sleeve. All right, bless the Lord. And the multiple pack placed on his life. And I think it's important to stop and consider a couple of things from this account and lessons that we can learn about OCD. Hallelujah. Number one, OCD kills joy. Somebody say kills joy. Notice, notice until the song began to sing about David, Saul is doing great. He has been handpicked and hand selected by God to be king. He has moved and settled into a place. He is sleeping maybe between satin sheets. Bless the Lord. He has servants to serve his meal. He's thriving. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is undefeated in battle. However, as soon as OCD kicks in, tormenting spirit takes over him. Mark Twain had it right. Uh, He said comparison is the death of joy. Uh, You know, somebody said it like this. The key to success is comparing yourself to everyone every day. And then that anxiety and then let that anxiety and that fear prepare you to work harder, faster and with more motivation. Bless the Lord. By the way, the person that said that had a nervous breakdown when they were 27. Bless the Lord. (laughs) Hallelujah. Saul has a breakdown simply because he's overcome by this comparison disorder. One man rightly said comparison is the act of violence against the self. 
Saul is trapped by comparison to David. He sees David killing it. David's success led to his sickness. Isn't that something? David has connections Saul only wish he had, and he becomes sick. He loses his joy. How many of us have lost joy simply because we begin to focus on what others have that we don't? You, you was doing all right till you was paying too much attention. Is that all right? You were good until they got the car. You were good until they got the job. You were good until the house was more than adequate, bless the Lord, until they moved in their house. You were good until they got blessed, healed, promoted. See, OCD, it kills joy. Number two, second point, OCD will cause you to overlook what God has done through you. Notice the, the women who came to meet. The Bible says they came to meet Saul. They were singing, but they came to meet Saul. Wait, look at it again, bless the Lord. They came out to meet Saul. They didn't go singing to David. They didn't come out to meet David. The woman sing about Saul and David. Hallelujah. It wasn't like they were only singing about David. They were singing about Saul. And see, OCD calls Saul to overlook his own accomplishments. Is that all right? They ain't say you haven't done nothing, Saul. They, they, they just spitting facts. They, they just saying the reality of what it is. But OCD calls Saul to overlook his own accomplishment. He underestimated what God had done through him. He was wise enough to let David, an unproven, untested young man, go to war on behalf of the nation. He was wise enough to elevate David. He was undefeated in his battles, king of Israel. Bless the Lord. He has killed his 10,000s. Wonderful. Glory to God. Listen, this wasn't just a win for him. It was a win for the team. You mad about something that we all winning after. I can't get nobody in here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. If you whip a Philistine, you whipping a Philistine for all of us. Why are you mad about what we all reaping the benefit of? If God raised you up and you the kingdom, it's the kingdom win. I can't get nobody in here. Well, they didn't, re- they didn't receive salvation when I witnessed them. Well, God sent somebody else and they received. Are you glad they saved? Sometimes you got to tell God, I don't care how you do it, who you use, if they won't hear me, raise up somebody else. If you got to send an angel unaware, do what you got to do, Lord. I can't get nobody in here. See, see, that's when you really kingdom. If it ain't this church, do it in a church. Oh, my God, my God. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. See, this is a season now. You have nothing to prove. Is that all right? Glory to God. God, God, God will allow somebody. And this is a season you got to be okay with. You can't be insecure. This is a season God may send somebody that can outwork you, execute better than you. Is that all right? And have good success. But guess what? Glory to God. It ain't, it's a win for all of us. Is that all right? That's why the older shouldn't get jealous of the younger. Come on, God called them young because they're strong. But we need the older wisdom. As w- <laughs> somebody can come in and do something 20 times fast as you. You don't get mad and hold your hand because somebody can do it. It's the job getting done. Is that all right? Is that all right? Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. I'm not intimidated. Who, who might can come in and can preach better? Listen, is the kingdom going for? You understand? See, you got to walk in the revelation. I got a place in God. In my father's house, there's a place for me. Watch this. But if it's a place for me, it's a place for somebody else too. Is that all right? Because you may not have all the skill. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. You may not, you, somebody else may have the skill, may have the efficiency. Is that all right? But bless the Lord. But sometimes you might need my wisdom, though. You know, when David got to a certain age in the Bible, the Bible said they wouldn't let him go out in battle no more. Is that all right? Because David had become a senior statesman now. And even though he was a warrior, he was too vital to go. They said, no, no, we're not going to let you. You ain't got nothing to prove. We know you're a fighter. But we're going to let you stay back in the camp and we're going to go fight, bless the Lord, lest the light of Israel go out. In other words, we need to preserve you for a time. Woo! And right now, I may need your wisdom more than your strength. 
Oh, you would get that right home. Is that all right? The truth of the matter is, is that it should have been David who should have been the one upset. He could have been like Saul, didn't do anything. Why are they singing about him at all? Period. Point blank period. Is that all right? But OCD will cause you to look past what, what the hand of God is doing in your life. Is that all right? You got to stop looking past what God. Look at somebody said, don't look past what God is doing. Don't, don't look past. You, you, you are called. You are gifted. Is that all right? You are anointed. You are appointed. You are valued. Is that all right? And, and that's what we got to teach even our children. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. D don't let no comparison thing trap you up. D -d -d don't you try to run after doing something just to prove something to somebody. Glory to God. I'm not trying to prove that I can do something better. I'm trying to run my race and stay in my lane. <laughs> Glory to God. How can I run after what you doing when we got different destinies? How can I run after what you doing when we got different routes? He knoweth the way I take. Glory to God. I'm not trying to get in your lane. I'm trying to stay in my lane. Oh, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. This is only a test. God never tests you to fail you, but he does test you to grow you. And some of you are upset and depressed right now because, because somebody else you are watching is killing it and being successful. Your problem is your OCD is calling you to miss out on the fact that you've been favored by God. Is that all right? You killing too just in another way. Is that all right? You missed the fact that God has grown you, used you, anointed you chosen you. You forget the fact that you didn't won victories that others have lost. Come on. Your marriage has survived what would have, what would have destroyed other marriages. Your children are children how, that others wish they had. Your job, how you, you hating on the job right now, bless the Lord, but you got something others are praying for. Is that alright? The addiction you beat got the best of somebody else. The sickness you fought back, glory to God, has taken others out. You done made a, a significant difference in the lives of others, glory to God. And what he has used you to do matters too. So don't get all upset about a song. Saul killed his thousand, David killed ten thousand. So why you all messed up about a song? Glory to God. He may got 10,000. I thank God I got thousands up in there, though. <laughs> Glory to God. I thank God that as for me and my house, it's working for me. Don't you get mixed up about a song. Don't you get mixed up about... No, no, you, you got to know your value. Is that all right? Somebody say, I'm an integral part of the kingdom of God. I just come to get your eyes off somebody else to leave and look at your own. Is that all right? Glory to God. Stop looking over at your neighbor and look at your own life. God has used you. Hallelujah. God has won victories through you. See, folk know you now. They don't know your past. Some stuff you done been there and done it and got the t-shirt. You ain't got nothing to prove. Is that all right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't run out the stuff. You don't run out the luxury. You don't run out the... You got to know the season you in. I ain't got nothing to prove. Is that all right? I just can't. I just can't. God. Somebody say God has used you. And he is using you. Quit wishing you had their life. Quit wishing you had their wife. Quit, quit wishing you had their victories. God has used you. But so you got thousands. Some folk ain't even got thousands. Okay. Just because they singing about their wins don't mean you don't have no wins. Ah, look at the signs of victory in your own life. Anybody that got signs of victory, glory to God. Um, I, I was young and now I'm old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken. No, it's seed, beg and pray. Hallelujah. If you don't look at your own sleeve and remember what God has done in you and through you, glory to God. When others have sung songs about them, it'll cause you to lose your joy. Is that all right? Is that all right? See, you got to be ready to receive something. You got somebody said, be ready to receive something. You got to be ready to receive the more. Is that all right? Don't, don't pray the Lord send them in, and then when He send them in, you compare yourself to whom He sent in. Come on, 
Don't pray, Lord, raise up somebody, and then when he raise up somebody, then you start comparing yourself to somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Don't, don't pray God send in money, and then when God sends in kingdom financiers, you get upset because God sent in money. Is that all right, Glory? See, sometimes you got to say, God, I don't care how the vision got to come to pass. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, you can give it to me, and you can move through me, but if you don't do it through me, you can... Oh, somebody said, this is how we do it. You, you can't ask God to send help, and then when help come, you start comparing yourself to help. You can't get mad at David that he killed Goliath when Goliath was taunting everybody for 40 days and nobody wanted to go to war. And the minute David goes to war and get the victory, now you upset that... Now you upset that Goliath is dead, but... And he brings up Goliath dead, but you upset about the one that God used to... Isn't that amazing? Isn't that funny how that works? Because OCD will cause you to assassinate an ally. Saul has secured an ally, a young man that knows his place, a young man who's feared, a young man fit, refuses to touch God's anointing, a young man full of honor and respect. David is fighting battles for you, Saul, for us, Saul. Hallelujah. Fighting stuff that you're unwilling to fight. Is that all right? He is laying the head of your enemy at your feet. Is that all right? He just saved, saved your kingship for you. But Saul's reaction doesn't match his David reaction. Why? OCD. Is that all right? Saul's OCD compares him, caused him to compare himself to David after the women did. He probably would have never had an issue if the numbers of the song had changed. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And that they were saying Saul killed 10,000. You wouldn't have had an issue. I can't get nobody. Is that all right? Glory to God. However, this OCD caused him to pick up a spear and throw it at David twice, literally trying to assassinate the help, literally trying to assassinate the ally. Is that all right? This causes, hallelujah, Saul to spend time, all his time, all his energy, all his resources hunting David when all David was trying to do was serve. Here's the word of the Lord, and I don't know why he told me to say it, but I'm going to say it. Don't run off the help. Because God says, I'm sending help in this hour. Help is here, and help is on the way. I'm sending resources. I'm sending stamina. I'm sending assistance. Don't run off. Is that all right? Somebody said, don't run off the help. Don't, don't run off the help. I'm sending help. I'm sending help in the school. I'm sending help in the workplace. I'm sending help in the marketplace. Is that all right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You got to get I'm not here to take over. I'm just here to help. Glory to God. Help is on the way, but don't run off the help. OCD calls Saul to attack someone who was trying to serve. His perspective was so clouded that he couldn't discern the difference between the two. How many of us become so sick with OCD that we begin to act irrationally towards an ally? Yeah. Oh, Lord Jesus. And, and some are throwing spears at people who are actually promoting and protecting you. You attacking people who are fighting for you. Is that all right? If it ain't you today, put it in your back pocket. But I'm going to preach what God said this Sunday. Anyone who give takes attention off your gift becomes a threat. When you have OCD, any anyone's gift that takes attention off your gift becomes a threat. Anyone who's anointing causes people to notice them becomes a threat. Anyone who begins to get favor probably because of their relationship with you becomes a target for their tongue accusations and mistrust. Come on. Is that all right? Why am I hammering this truth home? Because I keep watching too many folks destroy divinely appointed relationships because you don't know how to receive the blessing that God. I ain't trying to take nobody place. I'm trying to get in my place and do what God is calling me to do. I ain't trying to take your place. But, but listen, but the Bible do say, though, that a man's gift will make room for him. Now, when my gift start making room for me, don't act like I'm trying to take your place. I'm just... I just know that in my father's house, there's a place for me. I can't get nobody in here. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Now, most of us see ourselves as David. Most of us, Minister Tony, see ourselves as David in this account. However, the truth is, not everyone is David in the story. Preach, Bishop. I think I will. Some of us are Saul. I ain't scared. Glory to God. 
and you find ourselves consumed by comparison and it's making you sick. Quit looking at their sleeve. Look at your own. Quit attacking allies. Look at somebody that says that don't hurt the help. Don't hurt. See, life is about transitions. L life is about change. Sometimes the chairs will move. Is that all right? Hallelujah. But, but, but some, some, you got to embrace, in your walk with God, you're going to have to embrace change. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And you got to move, and you got to move. And so we won't transition. We won't movement, but we don't want to change. But transitions without change delays arrivals. Preach, Bishop. I said transitions without change delays arrival. So you only stagnating yourself. Transitions without change delays your arrivals. Is that all right? Glory to God. My children are not the age they used to be. And I understand. I got the parent different now. I can't say I'm just going to do it how I always done. No, 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 no. Transitions. Sometimes, Urs, you got to say the same point, but you got to say it a different way. I'm still saying what I said. But because I understand life is changing, I got to say it. Everything I can't fast walk you, some stuff I got to slow walk. I'm going to give you enough today and I'm going to give you a little more. I'm a, I, I can't say all I want to say because you can't handle all I want to say. So I'm going to say this on Monday. I'm going to come back on Saturday and say some more. <laughs> but I need you to digest the first part because if I give you too much, you will choke on what I'm saying. If I give you too much, I'm defeating my own purpose. We prophesy in part. Sometimes you got to talk in part. I can't get nobody in here. Sometimes you got to lecture in part. They don't have the stamina for an hour lecture right now. I can't get nobody in here. And don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. But, but sometimes you got to change. Everything, everything they do ain't a belt. <laughs> Everything is not a belt. I know what the Bible says. Spread around. I'm not against. But everything is not. Because I don't know. I don't know. Because sometimes you can get uh, tough to the belt. Did I say that route? You toughen up to the... You ever whoop somebody and they won't even cry no more? So, they know how to adjust. Is that all right? So, Sometimes you got to come another way. Sometimes the punishment got to come another way. Okay. Okay. Okay, is that all right? Is that all right? Is that all right? You know, I, I didn't get a lot of whoopings growing up because I just, I got a few, but I just, I, I knew they were coming if I did it. So I was smart enough to. But, but let me tell you what got me, because we didn't have all these gadgets. When she took that TV out my room, I thought I was in prison. What? I would have rather beat me and let me watch TV than you took that. <laughs> huh? And God has shown you a way to get in. Is that all right? See, 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 see. See, Kayla. See, you, you got to move into the place. OCD. Somebody say OCD. You got to watch yourself. Somebody say you got to watch yourself. Not just comparing yourself against each other, but comparing yourself against enemies. Because when, when they went in and spied the promised land, the Bible says they came back and they said, we are like grasshoppers in our own eyesight. Glory to God. Their comparison to their enemy. 
caused them to be defeated. Is that all right? Because they didn't see correctly the children of Israel didn't enter the promised land and end up wandering for 40 years. They didn't enter the promised land because, because they didn't believe the right things about God. They didn't enter into the promised land because they didn't believe right things about themselves. They said, we like grasshoppers in our own sight. Against them, we are like, gra- I compared myself to them, and I'm small. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. See, if you don't believe, if you don't believe God about you, then you won't believe right things about you when it's necessary yes, to get what God has said. Somebody said, I got to see this the right way. Is that all right? Glory to God. Notice the only difference between the two spies report and the 12 report. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The only difference of the report was the eyes. How they saw it. They saw the same enemies, but we say we're well able to overcome them. And they say compared to them, we can't do nothing. Look at somebody say, it's all how you see it. It's all how you see it. We, 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 we see in the same thing. We see in the same thing in our land. Preach, Bishop. We see in the same gas prices. I said we see in the same gas prices. Is that all right? Notice Joshua and Caleb are only two of the 12 that entered the promised land simply because they saw correctly. See, because y'all didn't see correctly from the start, you got in that wilderness and started complaining, murmuring, claiming. But listen, you started wrong. Ooh, you didn't get up in here and get wrong. You started wrong. Lord Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They saw correctly, so they believed correctly. I'm preaching to somebody. Unless you see yourself correctly, you will be, hallelujah, overcome. Is that all right? Even how you see the enemies of your faith. The issue isn't, the issue is that if we don't see ourselves correctly, then either we don't, we we see ourselves inferior. Is that all right? Or we see ourselves as superior. Glory to God to things that will destroy. You you got battles you got to walk in. At at least you got to start right. You understand what I'm saying? At at least you got to start walking the school year saying, and this is a successful year for me. Look at somebody says how you started. Come on, said how you started. See, OCD is broken when you allow God to introduce us to the to to what who, to how He's created me to be. When you come in environments like this and say, "But I am a child of God," I walk out here and face my battles from a revelation that I'm a child of God. I don't I don't I don't go into it. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. See see see. The truth is, they didn't have a they didn't have an aptitude problem. Caleb and them saw it correctly. They said, we're well able to take the land. Huh? What was the issue? They had an attitude problem. They saw wrong, so they thought wrong. And it's the truth about us. You don't have an aptitude problem. You have an attitude problem. They said, we're well able. You are gifted. Come on, you are anointed. You are skilled. It isn't your aptitude, glory to God. Sometimes it's the fact that you got an eye problem. Preach, Bishop. You don't see yourself correctly, so you have an attitude problem. Your attitude says, I'm not enough, when he didn't say it, he's more than enough. Your attitude says, I'm not strong, even though he says, hallelujah, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. Glory to God. And all things are possible to them that believe. Your attitude is, I'm a nobody, even though he said, you're the head and not the tail. Above only and not beneath. Glory to God that you are joint heir with Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen generation and a royal priesthood. Don't forget the first attack of the enemy in the garden was to get us to question what God said. Oh, Jesus. We know how the enemy job is. He's assigned, she said it, to steal. Am I teaching this morning? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. I think so many times we get so focused on the kill part that we forget about the steal part. See, the enemy wants to steal your knowledge of of who you are in Christ. Because if he can stop you, keep you from knowing who you are, then you may survive, but you won't have any confidence. You may survive, but you won't be brave. You may survive, but you will be a winker. If he can steal the knowledge of who you are and get you focused on someone else, then he'll steal your joy. Look what they got. Look what you don't got. Look where they at at 42 and look where you at at 42. Look what they at at 65 and look where you at at 
Is that all right? If he can steal your knowledge of who you are, then he will steal your faith. But if he, can, if he can see you as God sees you, if you can see yourself as God sees you, then you will possess what you call to possess and you will possess it without pride rather than gratitude. Yes. Yes. I'm asking God to open our eyes even the more. Yes, sir. Look at somebody say, the eyes have it, the eyes have it. Ah, come on. How do you look? When you look in the mirror, what do you see? Glory to God. You got to look in the right. You got to look in the mirror of God's word. You got to say, I'm chosen. Come on. I'm anointed. I'm favored. Come on. I'm hand selected. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm loved. I'm accepted. I'm known. Come on. I'm beautifully and wonderfully made. All that's in the word of God, will you find it in yourself? Somebody say, find it in yourself. Last thing, and I'm done with this. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Somebody say, you got to watch this. You got to watch it. Watch this. You got to watch this. What, what am I watching? That OCD? Because you need this teaching whether you Saul or David. Because if you Saul, you need to get set free. And if you're David, you know how to deal with it when it come around you. Ah, uh, uh, OCD. Obsessive comparison disorder. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let, can I tell you about the fruit of OCD? Yes, and if there's any doubt that it's terminal, it's terminal if it's not addressed. Wow. Wise man in the Bible described the end result of this symptom as this. Watch this. It's that J word. Jealousy. Oh, you don't prove about jealousy on a Sunday morning, Bishop? I am, I is, I am, I am. Because you want to downplay jealousy, and the Bible says that jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Lord, have mercy. Jealousy is fierce. Another translation says jealousy is fierce as the grave, or jealousy is as enduring as the grave. The wise man describes the end result of this symptom. Glory to God. See, when you are addressing OCD, you cannot ignore jealousy. It seems to be, hallelujah, that it is one of the most prevalent and unresolved issues of OCD. And this is the thing, because your church mind, your church brain, we act like followers of Christ don't suffer with these symptoms. And we try to cover it up because we got a blessed and highly favored. I can't get nobody in here. And we see someone blessed, glory to God, blessed, highly favored, hallelujah, and we fake smile. We talk about how happy we are for their blessing and go home and sulk for three weeks. Wishing it was us instead of them. When someone who is more talented or gifted than us in a particular era, we clap and compliment in public and then cry and curse in private. But I, I want to I let you know something today. Bless the Lord. See, jealousy, here's my next one. Jealousy turns compassion into competition. Jealousy causes us to see anyone below us as unworthy or unnecessary. And then we have other issues with those that may be above us. Is that all right? Glory to God. Sometimes we have a mistargeted enemy. And see what jealousy does is cruel. It may not be to that degree, but it's cruel. Is that all right? See, 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 a jealous spirit says, I have to knock them off. I got to outdo them. I'll discredit them. I got to get them out. Is that all right? I have to unseat them. I'm going to tell you something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You, and, that, and, that's, and that's the chat that you, you want to be gifted. You want to be anointed. You want to be blessed. You want to be all that stuff. Sometimes you, you need to be praying as you walk into the blessing. Yes, Preach, Bishop. Be, 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 because, Lord. I say you got to pray as you're being escorted into the blessing. Because, because there could be some je jealousy attached to your elevation. Is that all right? That's why, that's why you have to be very careful. You got to be very selective who you bring into your space in your life. 
everybody can't come into every space in your life. Is that all right? There, there can be no comparison, no empathy. Is that all right? When you fall, when you're full of jealousy, glory to God. It's hard to love one another how you're supposed to love when you're jealous of one another. It's hard to celebrate like you need to celebrate. Is that all right? Oh, Bishop, no, it, it ain't like that, Bishop. It ain't like that. Hallelujah. D don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play like those uh, that, that, that those that near Jesus can't be overcome with jealousy. Shall I remind you of a scene in Luke 22? When you see holy, righteous, reverent, anointed, favored apostles and disciples sitting together and they made this statement. They, they was having a dispute among them to see which of them were considered the greatest. Is that all right? It wasn't bad enough. In Matthew 20, James and John and James' mom comes and bows at Jesus' feet and begs him that her sons be given seats of favor when he becomes king. The other 10 disciples hear the request and get angry. Is that all right? They dispute who's going to be the greatest among us. And Jesus said, hey, what y'all talking about? <laughs> ah, we all got a place in God. What? Jealousy crept in with them, and they were with Jesus daily. They had a daily bread kind of God. They, 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 they were Jesus minute by minute, and they jockeying for a position. They so green. Two of them, old mom, came to, came to fight for. See, jealousy creeps in, and, it's, and, you, have to, and you have to guard yourself. Stop being so naive and gullible and you got to make sure you 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 have the love of god in your heart so when you get the promotion on your job and sister boquisha that's been there for three years ain't got the promotion and you like why ain't everybody congratulate me you got and there may be some things underway and the reason you got to keep your heart checked so that you don't start treating boquisha how she treating you Cause promotion doesn't come. He's, promotion comes from God. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And, and you got to, and listen, when you're doing stuff big, when God is elevating you, when he's blessing you, I'm telling you, there's some blessings on the way. Is that all right? See, see, only two things will guarantee no controversy. Stand seated and stand silent. Only two things will guarantee no con. But the minute, glory to God, you stand up for something, the minute you're going about what you called to do and then you want to voice something, it's going to be something sad. Only two things is going to guarantee no controversy, staying seated and staying quiet. But the church needs to roar. The church needs to sound the alarm. Is that all right? And I will not be silent. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I can stay safe, but I ain't going to accomplish nothing. Come on here. Glory to God. I can stay safe, but I'm not going to advance the kingdom. I can stay safe, but I'm not going to get what God has said. Is that all right? If I'm going to break generational curses, come on. If I'm going to go further than generation, but five, I can't take a seat on some stuff other folk took a seat on. I can't stay silent about what everybody else was saying silent about. Woo! Come on, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These guys rubbing shoulders with Jesus daily reveals that jealousy doesn't even have to make sense. We all walking with Jesus every day. Is that all right? See, we, I'm, I'm closing. We told in scripture that God is a jealous God. His jealousy will consume you. He won't share us with anyone or anything else. For our God is a jealous God. I'll have no other gods before me. He said, even you a backslider, I'm married to the backsliders. That are right. If that is the case, then why don't we think jealousy from the enemy can also consume you? But please, not, not, not that there is a difference in their jealousy and, and that in the difference is also, hallelujah, the reason jealousy is so deadly. You know what the Holy Spirit shared with me? God's jealousy is healthy for us because his jealousy is protective. But the jealousy of the enemy will destroy you because it's possessive. It controls us. It it's cruel. I can't get nobody. And too many of us are being controlled by this symptom, our attitude, our outlook, our words, our heart, being controlled by jealousy. And sometimes when it's creeping up in you, you need to learn how to go to the altar your own self. 
And so, God, I want to be happy. What is this that I'm feeling? What, what is this that's going on? And sometimes it has nothing to do with them. Sometimes you're frustrated by the own delay in your life. But what's wrong with me? Or why it ain't me? Well, I've been walking this for a long time. Well, I've been doing the same thing a long time. Sometimes not even in. It's the inward stuff. Paul said it like this, Tony. It's a war going on in my members. And sometimes you got to say, God, I don't want to treat them funny because of something that's going on in me. I don't want to take out the war on me, on you. Lord Jesus. Last point. Jealousy is a, a dream killer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Look at somebody say, Bishop's going to close. It just take him about four times, but he's going he's to close. I'm winding it up. Glory to God. <laughs> I'm, pulling, I'm pulling it in. I'm pulling it in. You can see, because you can't pursue your own dream if you, if you, if you are pursuing or jealous of someone else's dream. See, what you make happen for somebody else, God will make happen for you. You, you have to be intentional. Because increase happens on purpose. I got to learn how to rejoice with them that rejoice. Is that all right? See, if you fill with jealousy, then you're going to have a difficult time loving the calling you have. If you fill with jealousy, you're going to have a difficult time loving the calling you have. Why? Because you'll spend all your energy and time loving the calling you wish you had. And you can't be who God wants you to be because you're still wishing for the call. And it's been 30 years. <laughs> and you still ain't embraced your life. <laughs> Come on here. You, you, Cinderella, you still trying to get the glass slipper and go to the ball. That ain't even your shoe size. <laughs> and, and you still trying to put your foot in it, trying to go somewhere. That ain't even your shoes. And you still trying to lose weight in your foot. I can't get nobody in here. So that you can get in. <laughs> Give it up. <laughs> but you will spend all your time, and somebody's getting set free. You will spend all your time, all your energy, loving the calling you wish you had. And if you're filled with jealousy, then you won't love your spouse. You won't love the kids. You won't love the job. You won't love the car. You won't love the house you have. You know why? Instead, all your attention will be used up on the spouse, the kids, the job, the house that you wish you had. Then you start parenting your kids based on what you wish they were. Y'all don't want to talk in here. Some, some of you, some of you, and you can't love your husband because you want to. <laughs> you want your husband to be the one they. Oh, y'all don't want to talk. You, you. you. <laughs> You want to love him to be the one you wish you had, not the one that God gave you. And now you stay in a perpetual season of frustration. You, you, you. Ursula, you can't love this pastor because you want this pastor to be the one you see on TV. You ain't going to never receive this one if you want this one to be that one. Go, that's right. Go, go, go. Go join that church. You can be an e-member of that church if that, but but you will never get out of this. Oh, y'all don't want to talk in here. Some of you can't accomplish your own dreams because you're so jealous of somebody else's dream. You can't love who you need to love because you caught up in what you wish you had. God didn't give you that. God didn't give you them. God didn't give you this. God didn't give you those. This is yours. This is your hand. I can't get nobody. You got to work with what you've been given. Is that all right? Glory to God. I love this here church. This church ain't perfect, but guess what? I'm going to love what God has me. See, you ain't got to the place yet. Whatever my lot, thou has taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well. You ain't going to never be the parent to your children wishing your children was like... They got different DNA. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And on the best day, you ain't going to nap. So if you, if you parenting them based on, woo, glory to God, hallelujah. He didn't give you someone, listen, he didn't give you someone else's story. 
He didn't give you someone else's testimony. He didn't give you someone else's anointing. That's why it don't do me no good to try to preach like you. God didn't give me that. Ain't that what David told him? Y'all want to put me on all this armor to go fight? I can't do it. It's too hot. It's too heavy. I can't get, I'm not proven in that. Give me a sling and five smooth stones and we can go to work. But don't try to get me to go to battle using stuff that don't work for me. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Now, you might can train me in that armor, but I'm not there yet. If you want an immediate, <laughs> if you need an immediate victory, I need to work with what I'm working with. And then after this, you can go in the back and you can train me how to use a sword. But, but today, we working with this slingshot. And I don't see recorded any other time, Tony, that he used the five stones in a sling. That was for that. Now, later on, he got trained in See, sometimes you got to tell folks, you got to receive me for where I am today. Oh, I'll get to where I need to be, but right now, you need to receive me. Why won't you make this food like this? Okay, well, today, I'm going to make it like I know how to make it. <laughs> you hungry? Okay, I'm going to make it like this today. Now, you can show me the recipe later. Why is it a big deal? I feel deliverance. Do you have Ephesians? What I told you, James 3 and 16, James 3 and 16, James 3. And 16. You want to know why it's a big deal? Bishop, you shouldn't preach that. You know, because for where you have envy or jealous or selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. See, the issue is that we want to downplay stuff. In our life, like it ain't no big deal. Where you have envy and selfish ambition, you will find disorder and every evil practice. Is that all right? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Think about that statement. That passage reveals how ugly and dangerous jealousy really is. Every evil thing is a result of jealousy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Jealousy is an entry point for the enemy to access my life. Jealousy is the launching pad. I don't know about you, but this one thing I don't play with, I don't play with a jealous spirit. Oh, you got to move around or move some stuff around. And this is what I found out, too. Sometimes, sometimes you ain't even got to do the moving around. God will move folk around for you. And people are like, oh, God, you took care of that for me, Lord Jesus. I, I was trying to figure out how I was going to say something. I ain't got to say nothing now. You know already. You, when God starts shifting people, you just let them go in and shift them, Lord. Okay. <laughs> Is that all right? Oh, that came up all of a sudden. Isn't that something? I was trying to see how that was. Oh, Lord. Is that all right? Because it's rooted in fear. Somebody says it's rooted in fear. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sometimes jealousy is rooted in fear. Fear that I will miss out if they get what I want. Fear that if they're more talented, then they will get the role or the response. Fear that I'll be overlooked. But I'm going after what God is saying. Second Timothy 1 and 7, God has not given me the spirit of fear, but love, power, and the sound mind. If I'm walking in jealousy, my mind is not sound. I can't get no back. So, so if you're jealous because you feel with fear, God haven't given you fear, then who's the author of fear? The enemy. Paul said, God ain't giving you a spirit of fear. You don't have to operate in fear. You can live in the knowledge of who the Father has called you to be. And if we suffer with jealousy, glory to God, you got to learn how to live with those around. Glory to God. You, you have to move into the place. Somebody said move to the place. Last scripture, Matthew 6, 3 through 4. I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing, I'm closing. Matthew 6. Matthew 6, 3 through 4. Glory to God. Matthew 6. I think I gave y'all this scripture. Glory to God. The Lord showed me the same principle. It says, but when you give to the needy, needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. So that your giving may be in secret. That when your father who sees what is done in secret, he will reward you. 
Is that all right? Now, oftentimes we talk about this scripture, we talk about it as it relates to giving. Is that all right? About how God rewards, and that's so true. But there's another aspect, glory to God, that we really must spend time to think about in our understanding to defeat jealousy. See, because if it's around you, you're going to defeat it. Glory to God. Because our natural inclination is that if I'm going, if I'm going to be able to beat jealousy, then I'm going to have to disconnect from everyone yes, yes. and live a separated life. But notice what the passage teaches. The right hand and the left hand are connected. We're on the same body. Just different. They attach. Is that all right? So, so the passage shows us that jealousy is defeated not by a lack of relationship, but a lack of attention. Last point, pay no attention. Somebody said pay no attention. In other words, I can defeat jealousy if while I'm connected and attached in a relationship with you, my attention isn't, on, isn't just focused on your blessing, your gift, your abilities. Is that all right? Each hand does what it's doing. Because you over here working and grinding, being blessed. And guess what? I'm over here working and grinding and being blessed. Each hand is giving a gift. Each hand is receiving a reward. The right hand can exhale, it can shine, it can get applause, but my left hand doesn't have to get jealous because I ain't just focused on what you're doing. I can peek over there and see what you're doing. Praise God, but I'm working over here myself. Most jealousy comes from folks that ain't doing much. So, so, so we connected in relationship. I'm not competing with you because you're doing me. I'm doing me, you doing you, I'm doing me. We working, and I'm just not sitting here doing nothing. Focus on what you're doing. I'm working the works of him who sent me while this day. Is that all right? I focus on my hand. I'm not distracted by your hand. Is that all right? Is that all right? Glory to God. Is that all right? Somebody say you got to pay attention to your own stuff. What are you saying, Bishop? You got to learn how to watch this. Watch it. And watch how you can maneuver. And don't be in bondage. You got to learn how to navigate through stuff well. Somebody said navigate through stuff well. Because God is calling you to be a... And listen, if you can't handle the difficulty, you can't handle the breakthrough. I said if you can't handle the difficulty, you can't handle the breakthrough. That's why when, when, when Joseph's brothers did all they did to Joseph, Joseph said, you know, when they came back, they were scared to come in contact with Joseph. And Joseph said, I'm not mad. You meant it for my evil. But God turned it for my good. I understood how you did me was a result of jealousy. It was a result of the favor that was on my life. But God had a greater good and a greater plan. Is that all right? And if I'm going to be a blessing, I can't be a blessing harboring stuff in my heart. Is that all right? Hallelujah. And then, and then you got to be free. Somebody say you got to be free. You can't just hold on to things because you're scared. You can't, you can't be who God has called you to be because you're scared to be it because you're like... I don't want to make nobody mad. Yeah. I don't want to make nobody. On, so what, you're going to hold back on the blessing that God wants you to have? Because yeah. you don't want to make nobody mad. I ain't going to step up in line because I don't want to make people mad. I ain't going to use my gift. Yeah. I ain't going to receive a promote. I don't want to. When God is promoting you, when God is promoting you, is that all right? Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know, I, I had to get delivered. I can preach because I'm delivered. Yeah. I said I can preach that I'm delivered. I said I can preach that I'm delivered. Because, you know, I'm, I'm a humble person. You know what I'm saying? A couple of years ago, my wife surprised me, glory to God, with a BMW. Matter of fact, I had two of them. But guess what Humble Bishop did, Shay? I never drew my BMW to church. I had it. Well, another reason I didn't drive to church is I got a big family. <laughs> so we come to church on Sunday. Come on, help me, y'all. So we come to church on Sunday. Everybody couldn't fit in the BMW because I got too many kids. That's what I said, right? Huh? Hello. And my, and my wife has a marketplace anointing, so... It wasn't BMW that came from church money. Let me free that. Glory to God. Hallelujah. But I said, I don't want to. I had two. I had a white one and a blue one. I drove it everywhere else. I didn't drive it to church. Isn't that something? For years. 
for real. I had I'm a bear as company. Bishop, but it's a king. You got the bit. Is it a BMW kid up? I still ain't saying nothing. I said it's, it, it, it's the other king. And I got set free one day. Because my brother in law came to my house one day and he said, Bishop, I love that. He said, A person like me from the street, I need to see that. I need to see you walking around blessed and have what you have. From a person like me that's come from the street, I need to know that I can be in God and can prosper. I can't get nobody. I need to know that, that I can be a king's kid. And I say, look at me in bondage with a religious mind. And the world needs to see something in the kingdom. And I'm called to be salt and light. I can't get nobody in here. Hallelujah. We don't need to just show people how to go through. You need to show people how to be blessed. And still love God. And still be holy. And still be righteous. But you're going to be worried about what people going to say. If people didn't bless you, you shouldn't be worried about what people going to say. If God bless you, all I'm worried about is what God is saying. Real talk. Real talk. And I say... And this guy from the street, well, he ain't on the street, but you know what I'm saying, came and schooled me. And I got a whole revelation. I said I got a whole revelation because I didn't try to call the church because I had too many kids. It was, but it wasn't. Because I ain't want to draw no attention. But the Lord has shown me something too. He said, even if there was somebody that had an issue with it, it's a small remnant. He said, you you surrounded by people that celebrate. Because if the anointing falls from the head down, y'all, I can't get nobody. When you go up, we go up. When you bless, we're blessed. When you prosper, we prosper. The anointing falls from where the head. So this is the hour not to be in bondage about anything that's about to come into your life. Did you hear what I'm saying? Did you hear what I'm saying? Don't you be in bondage about anything. About anything. And I drove, I drove to my job. And I heard people make statements. Ooh, how much you get paid here? I'm telling you, they said to you, folks will laugh and say stuff to your face. How much? How much you? How much you get paid here? Ooh, y'all see Mr. Hillett what he drove? It is something I drew with the work than drive to church, but but I had too many kids. But how you how you do what you? How, don't you know God can bless you so good? It'll make folks scratch their heads about how God is blessing you. Is that because they still ain't got the revelation that this job ain't my source? I got a big God and a big daddy. I can't get nobody, and He'll send me in the gift until your, you can't figure God out. He's a big God. Hallelujah. Oh, I feel freedom. Look at somebody and say, Don't you hold back. Don't you hold. Don't, don't you hold back. Don't you hold back. Don't you hold back. God, 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 God to teach you how to deal with stuff. He'll teach you how to deal with stuff. Your issue's not snakes. All you need to know is how to handle a snake. Okay. Snake's going to be around. <laughs> you can't do nothing. You got to learn the skill, how to handle, how to hold. Ooh, lift your hands. Glory to God. Ooh, somebody say, watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. Come on, say it again. Watch this, watch this, watch, watch. Watch this, watch this, watch this. 
Well, woo, I feel freedom. Glory, 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 glory. Father, I break every limitation. I break every restriction. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Every limitation, every restriction, glory to God. Every place of hindrance is broken right now. I break, I break, I sever, glory to God, every OCD, glory, every obsessive, hallelujah, uh, comparison disorder in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we're free to be who you've called us to be. And we're free to walk in the blessing. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, lift the hands I receive my freedom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 Ha, come on, just lift your hands and come on. Glory to God. Any thrown off, awkward thought, glory to God. Hallelujah. Any way that you may have felt, glory to God. The blessing is on my life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, you, can't be, you can't be sad about the desire of your heart that he blessed you with the desire. And you can't even testify of the desire. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, Lord, help me to watch. Help me to watch. Help me. Help me to watch. Help me to watch. And we got to start covering each other. Oh, look at them. Who they think they are. Start telling people they blessed. That's the man of God. That's the woman of God. Come on. Don't throw no shade on my sister in Christ. Come on, glory to God. She's been faithful. She's serving the Lord. She got seed in the ground. Glory to God. She's been waiting a long time. She didn't work for somebody else for years. Now she's working for her own self. Let's celebrate that. Why are you mad that God is prospering her business? The devil is a liar. Don't show no shade over here. This is kingdom. And a house divided against itself cannot stand. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come on, just wave a hand. Ah, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just touch three people around you. Say, walk in the blessing. I need to see something. Come on. I need to see something. I need to see something. I'm trying to see something. Walk in it, okay? I need to see something. I need to see something. Ha! Huh, I need to see something. I, I got to see something. My faith need to see something. Except you see signs and wonders, you won't believe. I, I need to. I need to see something. Hallelujah! Jesus, how the love Bahia. Thank you, the Bahia. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I bind jealous spirits in the name of Jesus. I bind the, ju the, 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 the cruelty of jealousy. Ah, I bind every spirit of backlash and every spirit of retaliation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I sever every cord. I, I break every chain by the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Every, every, every evil work. Glory to God. Every spirit of disorder. I sever it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 The people of God deserve to be blessed. I said the people of God deserve to be blessed. If you're prospering in the spirit, you ought to be prospering in the natural. I believe that. Because I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prosper. In Jesus' name. Come on. Come on. If, we, if we're prospering in the word, we ought to see results from the word. Come tell me you got something good. Come tell me I'm going to rejoice. Don't tell me you got a new car. I'm going to come sit behind your car, your steering wheel. And I'm, 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 I sure am. I will. And I want to. That's how I do it. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. Huh? That's how we do it. Because what's happening here, it is manifesting. Pastor Sue Yackel said in this church last week, the healing anointing fell in this place. She said, Lord, I want to get up there. I said, she'd been in chronic pain for months. She was in pain in the service. She said, Lord, I want to get up there and testify. But it wasn't complete yet. But she said, I wanted, she called me four days later. She said, I just wanted to tell you, since I sat in your service and the healing anointing failed, I've been able to sleep four nights straight. 
without any pain. She said, I didn't want to call too quick because I wanted to make sure it was real. Yes. Glory to God. Somebody ought to thank God for healing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some stuff is instant and then some. Yeah, that's right. that's but when you receive that anointing, Hallelujah. I rejoiced on the phone with her. I rejoiced for her like it was for me. Because that's how the Lord... So thank you. I said, no, let's thank God. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. Let's thank God. Hallelujah. Door, woo, the doors of our church are open. Holla, I feel freedom, glory. Doors of our church are open. There may be one that's not saved. Holla, you don't have a church home. We open our doors to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Open our doors to you. Don't have a church home. We open our doors to you. You're a backslider. Glory to God. You want to come back home. Give the Lord your life. You can come at this time. Thank you, Jesus. Three calls. Salvation. Backsliders. We don't have a church home. You want to unite with this ministry. The day you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Hallelujah. 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 Going once, going twice. Three times in Jesus' name. Ask the offers yours to accept or reject. Come on, clap your hands for this move. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. <laughs> mm, yokes are just being destroyed right now, right there in your seat. Glory to God, right where you're standing. M mental things are shifting. Glory to God. God is rearranging some things in your heart. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you got to pray, Lord, send people in my life that's going to love me for me, that's going to love me for real. Hallelujah. That's, that's, that, that's, that, that's going to be there when I go through, but love my success as well. See, that's when you got a real friend, when they can celebrate your success. I know we know how to struggle together, but can we go up together? Glory to God. Hallelujah. I feel an anointing. Let's receive our offering. Oh, my God.